Well, hello. And first of all, I'd just like to start off by thanking Invest Wollongong for taking the initiative to organise and host this webinar for our community today. Now, for those of you listening in who normally find yourself in a four hour daily train or car commute to Sydney, hopefully working remotely will give you the opportunity to pitch your Sydney employers to work from home or from one of Wollongong's um, co-working spaces a couple of days a week once this isolation period ends. In the meantime, though, what we're hoping to do is give you a bit of an introduction to Microsoft Teams and, and let you work a bit more efficiently while we're all forced to, to at least work from home at this time. Now, uh, if I can just ask us to go to the, oh, the next slide, um, just to introduce myself very briefly, and, and really not gonna be hearing a lot from me during the actual uh, presentation and demo by, by Liza. I'm really here to help host. I might just mention that I run my business from Wollongong. Uh, I've been working remotely for many years, and then more recently I've run my business entirely from, from Wollongong. And I must say, it's been a really, really great opportunity to, to get that work-life balance. So I used to commute almost every day in the past, and it's certainly been much better working from Wollongong. Most of my customer base, though, is actually in Sydney, Melbourne, and beyond, and, and certainly being based down here hasn't limited my, my business at all. Now, I'd like to, at this stage, hand over to Liza and, and let her introduce herself. Welcome everyone. I'm Liza Tinker. I'm a freelance content collaboration and remote work specialist. I've been working remotely now for over eight years. I've worked with quite a few different online tools in my time. And today I'm excited to be taking you through Microsoft Teams. It's a tool that I've been using for about two years now and will collaborate, being able to collaborate with my colleagues through the Asia Pacific region. I think it's a great tool. So I'm really happy to be able to share it with you today. So I'm just going to, uh, drop off the video and then jump into the presentation. Actually, actually sorry, Liza, um, I forgot to mention, um, not doing, doing a great job of hosting at the moment. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things I missed, I uh, omitted to mention just before we got started. So firstly, uh, just be aware that obviously networks are a little bit stressed at this time. Everyone is working from home, um, doing video conferencing. So if we see a few glitches along the way, please um, um, bear with us, but don't worry, we are actually recording the session and you'll be able to watch this later. Liza is going to be covering quite a lot as well. So you'll be able to rewatch that um, if you don't quite get the, the point or see the element the first time around. So don't worry about that. You can also use the Q and A feature to ask questions, but we'll actually deal with the questions at the very end. Sorry about that, Liza, back to you. No, that's okay. Um, I'm just going to go back. Okay. In an ever changing world, we now find ourselves working from home more regularly or permanently. Most workers are familiar with using Microsoft Office applications, whether it be on the desktop or in the cloud as part of Microsoft Office 365. We are now faced with having to use these applications productively, but also to collaborate with our colleagues via chat and video conferencing. There are also so many other different tools in the marketplace, which you would have heard of, such as Zoom, which we're using today, Slack, Yammer, SharePoint, Trello, just to name a few. Today, we're here to talk about Microsoft Teams, which we like to refer to as a virtual office. With Teams, you can hold every call and every meeting that you have on Teams. You can use channels rather than email or group chats for team level conversations. Also, you can turn on your camera to connect during meetings. You can use live events for larger gatherings. And if your organisation allows it, you can record meetings to access the transcript later. We also like to remind you that Teams meetings aren't just for one-on-ones or small stand-ups. They can range from informal coffee breaks in channels to highly collaborative quarterly planning offsites with 100 employees or more. You are familiar with the Microsoft Office apps in your everyday work. So what is great is that these are also built right into Teams. So you can use and share the files you create in Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook without even leaving the tool. Enabling a team to work remotely is an ongoing challenge. And this challenge is different for every organisation. With our presentation today, we are hoping that you can see how Teams can make it's much easier for you to connect, collaborate, and have all your tools, documents, and apps all in the one place so that as a remote worker, 
you can easily connect and find what you are looking for and be productive. I'm now going to take you through the Microsoft Teams interface and its components and show you how it can bring all your applications, documents and tools together to make working remotely much easier. So I'm now going to open Microsoft Teams. I'm going to start by giving you a quick overview of the different tabs. Down the left, you'll see Teams. This lists all the teams that you are a member of. Teams are made up of channels. Channels are where the real work gets done. At the top of each channel, you'll find some tabs. Tabs are links to all of your favorite files, apps, and other items which you can customize yourself so that all your work can be accessed in the one place. When you store a file in a channel, um, sorry, when you store a file in a channel conversation, for example, in this conversation here, you see this document automatically goes up into the files tab. You can also, within the posts, edit your files directly from here. The other place to find your files is over on the left. These are your files across all of your teams and channels. Next, we have a section called chat. Here you can set up a chat privately or in a group. It's very easy to start a chat just by selecting this icon up here. Start typing the name of the person you want to chat with or if you have a group, that will come up as well. And then you can just start a message. And enter. The other area that we'll be going through is also the calendar. Your calendar automatically synchronizes to Outlook. To join a meeting, you can open the presentation, open the meeting and then click join or select join directly from the button that's available on the meeting in your calendar. And we'll go through that in further detail. You can also share your screen and record your meetings if this is enabled. The other part of the interface is the activity tab. This section lets you catch up on all your online messages, at mentions, replies, voicemail and more. It's basically a snapshot of everything that's happened in Teams across everything. Um, so it's like an activity feed, just like you would find in Facebook and other applications. Wherever you are in Teams, you can find everything in the command tab. So you can find people, so I can, I'll look up James here. Apps, just start typing away and you should be able to find what you're looking for. The other part of the interface, which is quite important, is you might want to actually access Teams from your mobile phone. So down on the left here, if you click on the mobile phone icon, you can then download the app by the QR reader and you have instant access. So that's just a quick overview of the actual interface. We have the activity feed, chat, Teams, your calendar, we have the calls section. You can actually phone people directly from here, whether they're in Teams or not. All your files. And then down here, you'll find extra apps if you're interested in using those. And we'll go through those in a bit more detail in a moment. So that's just a quick overview. I'm now gonna jump in and talk about how to set up your Teams and channels. To get your team up and running in Microsoft Teams, you need to create a team. Add people to your team and then add channels. To do this, you select Teams, then join or create a team. Again, you'll have a couple of options. You can join a team with a code that someone might have sent you or create a team. You can build the team from scratch or create it from an existing Office 365 group or team. I'm going to create a team from scratch. Then ask yourself, what kind of team will this be? A private team that only certain people need to have permissions to, or a public team that anyone in the organization can join? For this, I'm going to select public. 
give your team a name that everyone will recognize. I'm going to call this information technology as it's going to be a team that um, a department is going to be using. Give it a description, IT team members, I'm going to say, and then create. Then your team will be created. Uh, depending on the bandwidth as how long this might take. Great, our team's been created. And the next step is to invite people to join. So since James is in my network, I'm going to invite James and add him. But if you have external people that aren't in your organisation you'd like to add, you can just start typing their email address. Then decide what type of members you need in your team. Either an owner or make them a member. Um, it's good practice to have another owner of a team, just so that if you're away, someone can make any admin changes. I'll keep James as a member for this team. And then select close. So now you'll see we now have a new information technology team and it's automatically created a general channel. So once you've created this team, you'll want to add um, some more channels so that you can begin working because that's really where all the work is done in Teams. You can create different channels for all the different topics that you might have with under, under each team. For example, when you have a look up here under Teams training, I've created a channel called General. Well, that's the automatic channel that is created. And then I created one called Issues and that's a locked down to certain people only because we don't want everyone seeing what all the issues are that we are working on. And then I created one just for fun where people might want to come in and put some GIFs or emojis and, you know, share pictures of their lunch and things that they're doing since we're all working remotely. We probably want to um, have a bit more fun in that aspect. So now that we have a new team and a channel, we're going to start talking about working in channels. But firstly, I'm just going to show you how to quickly create some additional channels underneath your team. For example, under information technology, click the three dots there. And that's where you can make create new channels, delete them, um, get links, um, edit members of the team. It's all managed from here. So I'm going to add a new channel. And in information technology, again, I'd like an issues channel helping with issues. I'm going to make this one private and then next. So as you can see, it's quite easy to create new teams as well as channels. I'm gonna skip adding some members at this point. So there we have it. We've got a new team with a few different channels in it. So now that we've created those, Channels are where the team collaboration and all your conversations happen. I'm going to jump into this channel up here because we've been doing a bit of work in here over the last few days so you can see what it begins to look like and some of the things that you can do within the channel. So I've clicked suddenly remote. So each channel is, has the tabs up the top as well as a space for you to add conversation. Every channel has a post tab where team members post messages and replies, which is what you can see here. And all the conversations are stored in the channel. So it's really easy to catch up. Say you like what someone said. There are lots of little things you can do, such as give a thumbs up. I can create a new message here. So I'll just say new message. Also, if you make a mistake, like I've just noticed in this one that I've done here, um, there's a typo. So I can just quickly go in and edit and here, change that and then save it again. Okay, so anywhere in Teams where you see this little paperclip icon, you can attach a file. So what I'm going to do is attach a file here. You can browse your teams and channels to find a file that's already been uploaded. OneDrive is another place that you can pick up files or you can upload from your computer. I'm going to select that one. 
and I'm going to pick up a Word document and open. And once it's uploaded, I could, I'm going to ask James. So I'm going to at mention James. I'm going to say, please review. And then I'm going to post it. Okay. So with your files here, from the drop down here, you can edit it in Teams or open it in the desktop app or open in the browser. You can also download it or send a link to someone. Now what's great about Teams is that I could actually start editing this document at the same time that James is. And when you do that, you can actually see the changes live to, um, in real time, the changes that the other person is making. So that's great. Um, once you've uploaded that file into the posts, you'll find it on the files tab as well. So there you go. There it is. It was uploaded by me a minute ago. So as I showed you, you can edit from here. There are many way, ways that you can do that within the post, within the files tab. And then again, over on the left here under files, you'll see all files that have been uploaded throughout um, the whole of your Microsoft Teams application. So that's just a little bit about Teams and channels and then working within each channel. I'm now gonna go on to another area, which is chats, calls and messages. Channels and conversations in Teams are great, but sometimes you need to collaborate with a smaller group or talk privately. You can have either one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats with people. To start a new chat, just select the icon up here and someone to chat to. Send them a message. Again, and then they can respond to that. If you wanna to talk to someone directly in a chat, you can hover over them anywhere in Teams Thanks, James. And you can directly from here, click and have a phone conversation, an audio call or a video. You can have a look and see where they are in the organization, send them an email or just message a chat as well. So wherever you see every, another person's icon, you can actually um, start collaborating and having a conversation or video right from there. So also once you're in an actual chat, those icons are up here too. So right now I could just click video and it'll automatically start calling James. I'll hang up now, but once you're in that video call, there are so many other different things that you can do, such as share your files, you know, your screen. Um, so try and do that a lot since we're all working remotely. It's great to see the other person's face every now and then. Um, we do need to connect after um, not seeing each other and during these times. So that's just a little bit about chat. The next area I just want to talk about are meetings. With the meetings, there are pretty much quite a few different ways that you can start a meeting. You could just in your calendar, click meet now and invite people, add a new meeting and schedule it. Or if there's already a meeting in your calendar, you can click join and invite everyone from there. So as you can see, I've got the video on. We can, the other options are I can turn the audio off. I can add a room as well. Uh, some other options are there. This one here, you can blur the background. So like that guy in that GIF that had the child that ran in during his presentation, I'm sure you've all seen that one before. He could have had the blur on. So I'll just turn that off and I'll close. Other ways that you can access meetings are just from a link that can be sent out to you. Join in a channel, you can join in the chat, but I do find that the best way is from within the calendar because you can quickly meet now, start a new meeting, and then attend a scheduled meeting. So that's just about having a meeting in your calendar. What I'd 
like to go over now is just a couple of additional things in Teams, such as apps and tools that you can add just to make it more of that virtual office that we spoke about earlier. So I'm just gonna jump back to Teams here and I'm going to go back into my suddenly remote channel. From there, I can see there's an apps icon here, but also we talked about the tabs at the top and how you can customize those so that it's like your dashboard. It's where you come in every day and you can access everything that you wanna, you need to work on and just to make it much easier instead of having to jump in and out of all these different apps all the time, which as a remote worker and having worked with a lot of people with new technology, that is one of their most frustrating things is where do I go to find what? How do I find things? So with these tabs, you can set this up so that you can find whatever you want easily. So under this one, we've got posts, which is automatic, files. You also get a wiki as part of it. I added my um, OneNote notebook because I like to use OneNote to capture all my notes and record everything. But if you want to add anything extra, you just have to click add a tab and all these different options will come up. These are the main ones that you will get, but your organ organization can also add other different apps in here, such as Trello, anything else that you're using externally. There are just so many different apps, but these are the main ones. So you could effectively just add a single file. So for example, uh, if you had an Excel spreadsheet that you're working on all the time that you just want to access really quickly, you could add that quickly to your tab. I'm going to click on uh, Planner so you can see what that app's about. So Planner makes it easy for your team to stay organized, assign tasks and keep track of your progress. Create a new plan so you can start getting things done. So I'm going to call this the IT plan and hit save. You'll notice here it says post to the channel about this tab. What that will then do is let everyone know in the channel that you have created this new tab and click save. Okay, so now up here on my tabs, I've got my IT plan as well as my notebook and other files. So that is really useful to be able to capture everything in the one screen that you're currently working on. Down here on the left are also lots of other ways to access apps and you'll see a whole bunch of different apps in here as well. And as I said, some apps have to be added by your IT administrator. If you don't find what you're looking for there, just speak to them and we should, we should be able to add it. So that's covering apps and tools that you can add. Lastly, I just want to show the activity feed. The activity feed is where everything that's happened today over time is all captured so that you can catch up on everything in the one place. So as I said, it's a summary of everything that's happened in all of your channels that you can follow. Uh, you can also customize this to select what type of um, activities you want to see. Say so my activity, so just everything that I've done, there's also a filter here so that you can set up different filters and um, find what you're looking for. So that's a quick overview of Teams. So before I um, sign off, I just wanna, I'm gonna go into another part of the presentation, just about best practices and some other things, but um, is before I sign off, James, has anyone asked anything specific about they want to see here in Teams at all? Hello again, Liza. Thank you for that so far. We've had a, um, a couple of questions around the calendar functionality, perhaps if you could jump back into. Um, and I have sort of once answered one person directly, but I think it's worth sharing with everyone. But can you explain how the calendar here relates to Outlook and the features you get in Outlook, like recurring um, meetings and those sorts of things? And also well, the other question was um, about what adding a room actually does. Okay, so the calendar, it synchronizes to Outlook. So all of your meet, 
every meeting that you've got scheduled should be appearing in here. This is just a demo site for me. So I do have the only one. I only have one meeting in here at the moment, but all my other meetings would be here. To set up a meeting, it's a matter of just creating it either in Teams or in your Outlook calendar. There's a whiteboard as well, which is, um, I haven't used this before, but I do know a lot of people do use this when they're training. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll join the actual meeting so we can look and see what, uh, so we can help answer that question about adding a room. So we can add a room to your meeting to use its sound and video system. Your own device will connect without audio to prevent echo. Now the room aspect is my understanding is that you could have some virtual rooms that you can dial into. I might get James to uh, cover that off a bit more because I'm, I'm not fam overly familiar with how people have been using that one. And I know that you had a session the other day where you used that, that type of functionality. Sorry, just having to unmute myself. That's yeah, okay. I'll come back and, 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 and cover that. There were also some other questions coming through just about how long content is archived or remains searchable and also how secure. Do you want to talk to those or I can make some comments on that if you like? Yeah. Look, um, there is secure as talking in any of your other tools as well. So, uh, but as far as how, it depends on how things are set up by your different departments. I mean, obviously anything that you do in, in Teams could be accessed by your IT department. Uh, but um, so you, you wouldn't want to have any conversations in there that you wouldn't want anyone knowing about. But um, I might get you to talk to that, James, just because that's more about the infrastructure and the setup. Uh, I don't know, uh, I think with far as, I know with SharePoint and others, it's usually at least if you delete something, it's there for 30 days. As far as conversations and the length that they're there, I'm, I think that's determined by the administrator. Is that correct? Yeah, that's probably a bit where my sort of um, expertise comes into play here. So from a back end point of view, um, chat messages actually get archived within Exchange, a bit like email. Um, and files are stored um, within SharePoint. Um, now, depending on your subscription, there might be some limitations on how much of that is stored over time. But if you have a paid account, obviously that content is, you know, contributes against your quota. But for as long as you have that, that um, within that quota, that information is all stored. And Microsoft actually provides what they call e-discovery tools which allow the information to sort of be recalled and found if necessary for, you know, for a legal reason. So you should actually ch treat chat within teams, just like you would email. Um, you might think it's a personal conversation that you own, but actually your, your employer or the, you know, the business you're part of and that subscription to office 365, it's all being captured in there. I'm a little bit unsure actually about the video um, because if that was all captured, um, that, yeah, actually that if, caption that would just be stored against your quota, wouldn't be captured automatically. I'm probably guessing as well that people are, have been hearing reports about security issues with Zoom. And I guess this is one of the benefits of sticking with the, the Microsoft ecosystem. All the content you generate within Teams stays within Office 365. Um, and it's sort of protected by the ov overall security measures that exist around your Office 365 tenants. Um, now I'm just going to, there's a few more, quite a few more questions coming through. I might just ask me if you can to use the Q&A function because I can track those a little bit better, but I'm just going to um, just check um, some of the questions that have been coming through to make sure we, we, we get to everyone. Um, now the, um, ah, can you actually moving away from uh, some of the, the meeting aspects, Liza, can you just show again how it's possible to embed different um, types of office files. So we've had a specific question around PowerPoint, but I'm wondering if you might just do a general um, review of that again, of how you can you know, attach specific files and, and show those to people. Sure. Um, I'm not sure. I, up here on the tab, I assume that's what they're asking because you can add files here in conversations, mm -hmm. but you can also add a specific file up the top. So what I'll do is 
I'll add a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, um, PowerPoint tab, uh, how to get, I'm actually gonna select any, I'm going through the actual uh, different teams right now. I'll click suddenly remote because I think that there's probably one there. It doesn't look like it's actually working for some reason. Um, it's not ask, giving me the option to say, but in your, um, it might be because this is just a uh, set up for the purposes of this demo. But what would happen here is that you would actually pick up the PowerPoint file. And once you clicked save, it would appear up here on this tab here. So for example, if I, I could try, I think I tried it with Excel or Word and it, okay, there we go. The Word, it's working. It's probably because I didn't have a file uploaded into Teams at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Up here now is that Word document. So you can directly access it there. I'm assuming yeah. that's what the question was about and it would just, I PowerPoint, any file could be added up there on your tab. Yeah, so I think this is the interesting feature of, of Teams then, and hopefully this is answering the question, is that you can browse all the files you have and you can certainly um, open them and edit them online, but you can also pick specific files and have them automatically um, open within a tab. So if you wanted to have a presentation file, you could do that. You can have the Word document example, but also I've seen people using, um, you know, sharing a, a, a spreadsheet as a shared maybe task tracking tool or uh, whatever you might be doing, but you can, you can edit them together because it's basically just embedding the Microsoft Office online um, features within, within Teams. So, so hopefully that answers the, the question. Right. Um, and that's, that's, I think, going through um, chat. There was actually just a, a general comment that someone said out to everyone. I might just mention as well before I move over to the, the open questions in the Q and A, just saying that your Zoom allows Google Analytics and, um, you know, is analyzing your personal data. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's some of the stories we're hearing about Zoom. Microsoft um, does actually have analytics as well, um, but they're not sharing those with other people. But certainly you, you can you use built-in reporting to see if people are using the tool. And there are some other add-ons that will give you even more advanced analytics so you can see how people are using Teams as well. Now, um, again, a few questions here to go through on the... Um, on the chat on the Q&A so I'm just gonna uh, get to these um, so uh, Liza with the private channels if you just um, jump over to those can you just explain how the, the sort of permissions work so it restricts the chat what about all the other files and things that you might share within that private channel everything that would is in that channel will stay private all the permissions are set at that level. That's actually a new feature. Uh, when I was using Teams months ago, we, you weren't able to do that. So that's great that they've added that in, but everything that goes in the private area will stay private. So all the conversations, attachments, will all be based on the permissions set on that, at that channel level. Yeah, I think as well, I know from a tech, from again, from the back end point of view, and for those of you who are familiar with SharePoint, or have used SharePoint, I think each, each private channel actually creates a sub site SharePoint site. So the everything yeah, that happens within that private channel in terms of files that end up in there is, is all managed by the same permission. So yeah, it's definitely very secure. Um, now with a few more calendar related questions that I'll come back to and try and pull those together. Oh, <laughs> someone's just asked about the the order of the posts and the activity stream. So all your t all your when you're having a conversation, everything is at the bottom of the page. There's no option to flip that around, is it? So the most recent um, sort of discussion thread is at the top. Uh, right. Yeah, doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do know though. Actually, if you have a feature request though. There is, once you, once you start using Teams, um, and there'll be a link somewhere within Teams for you to give feedback, but they have a, an open forum where you can make feature requests. And you'll see, and you'll quickly see whether 
the thing that you're asking for, whether it's actually available and you just didn't know where, where that setting was or whether there's people around the world that all want to have that same feature as well. So you can, you can simply ask, ask, it, ask Microsoft to put in place the things that you want it to do. Um, I think, oh, sorry, I missed this one earlier, but we were showing how we can embed files. And yes, when those files are embedded as a tab, um, you can edit them as, as, we were, as we were showing. So I think that one's answered. Yep. Um, just on the file editing, someone's saying uh, when you edit a file in Teams, it doesn't automatically update the file in OneDrive. Is that correct? Um, if you're editing the f a file that you've embedded and it's either in the um, Teams file store or OneDrive, as you're updating that, that should actually update as you, as you, um, as you make those changes. Yes, um, sure. if, if you, yeah, if you're doing it on the web. Now, if you're doing it on the desktop, though, it's going to sync those changes up, which maybe is where you might be seeing a, a bit of, a, bit of a, a, a lag there with the changes. Um, and just working my way through these um, questions. So I think we, so we've got a whole a lot of interest in the calendar functionality. I'm just going to start at the bottom. Um, so Liza, when we're creating meetings, can we include um, both internal and external people? Yes, you've, you've got to uh, just add their email address in and that should work. Um, also, it does depend on how it's all set up as well from an IT perspective. So, James, when you are implementing this, there are some things in the back end that have to happen to enable to do that. Yep, that's right. Um, done that one. So there's a question here. You've mentioned Outlook can sync together. I have a work computer at home, but, other but the other receptionist has uploaded our Outlook on the home computer. But they're not syncing up together. So I think actually that's probably more of an Outlook question. But the reason that one just caught my attention is that I have seen on the Microsoft roadmap for Outlook that I think there is a feature to help you combine your home calendar and your work calendar yeah. so that when people are trying to book meetings, um, they won't see the details from your home calendar, but it will, it will, will not sort of double book you where you've got a personal um, event scheduled um, right. but I don't think we can quite answer that one about the syncing yeah. right now so um, that was from Gail so maybe Gail you might want to um, perhaps follow up with us after the after the webinar about that particular issue um, now yeah we've got a couple of other sort of technical questions um, Cherie we might have to come back to you just to see what that specific thing is and also um, Jan um, ah, last one here that I almost missed. Um, is there a way to create a channel that shares a calendar? Um, so other than maybe doing it as a spreadsheet? A good question, actually, because one of the things in one of my recent roles was we actually wanted to have a shared calendar. And uh, we ended up using a different app called Shifts so that we could all share what we were doing but I'm not sure that's quite what you're after. Is it more, uh, say, a shared calendar, like on the Outlook, an Outlook shared calendar that you need? Is, is that what the question's about, you think, James? Yeah, I think that, that sounds like what the use case is. Mm, okay. Uh, I've, it's been a little while since I've uh, worked in the, in the office with this, but what we did to overcome it was also a shared SharePoint calendar and we embedded that at the top here on the file tab. And that worked because everyone would upload their, uh, their, the dates they're out of the office, all those things into that shared calendar. And it was available right here on the tab and synced to SharePoint and also synced to Outlook and Teams all at the same time. So that's something you can think about doing. Uh, as far as putting an Outlook exchange calendar in there, I'm not, that's a more technical one James might be able to answer, but we worked around that by using a SharePoint calendar and that worked really well. Actually, I think that is the right approach at the moment. So I was just going okay. to be a bit more detail on this. This is about someone sharing some of the, the some particular work activities they're doing. So it's more ah. of a less of a personal calendar, more of a what's happening. And yeah, behind every Teams, there is a SharePoint site. 
Mm -hmm. um, so SharePoint, if you haven't used SharePoint before, is and I've, I know I've mentioned it a few times, is a is another Microsoft Office 365 tool which uh, is older than Teams and was really designed for sharing files and content. But it has other tools built in, including um, um, calendars. So I think what you've described, um, Liza, is the, the the current approach at the moment. Is you would okay. you would embed that SharePoint calendar, and that will give you a a shared calendar for that for that private channel or even the a, a public channel as well. And look, you know, maybe try Planner as well if you're wanting to share tasks and things and keep track of projects. That's a great little tool for that. Um, without having to use something like Microsoft Project Planner, can um, it works really well. Now, I had another question in chat. Um, and yeah, it was just a comment in, in chat, I think it was probably worth sharing that that's correct. The moment you can't edit PDFs in, in the Teams window and they need to be modified outside. So yeah, we, we'd need to wait for Microsoft to provide native PDF features really within Office 365 and, and have that then available through, through um, the Office Online feature. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from actually even with the with all the office files, if you prefer to download a file and then um, edit it before you upload, that's also um, another option for you. Yep. Okay. So is that um, everything for, for now, James? And should I move on to the final part of the presentation? I, I think so, yeah. I've just did one more look through the questions. I think we've answered most of them, but if you, you okay. go through the next stage, I'll, I'll have a look through them again. And, and yeah, please put, keep putting questions in. Okay. All right, so we'll go back into the presentation here. So finally, I just want to go through uh, a few best practices and some of them I've covered already, but just to highlight some of the main best practices that you should be thinking about when creating teams and channels. Make sure you create your teams around a common goal. Think about the goal, project or work items and who can help deliver it collaboratively and set up your teams and the channels from there. Designate multiple owners as you may be away and someone else might need to make an admin change to either a team or to some channels. Build your teams gradually. It's better to add people later than to have to delete people as you go. Create channels to focus on your discussions. For example, as well as your general channel, create others such as for particular issues, maybe lock that one down, projects, or just one for fun to break up your conversations and your content. Use the general channel to reach out to everyone and consider moderation if you feel that something, it's something that your organization needs. Finally, I just wanna go through a few key habits that will, as you move to remote work, set you up for success. The first priority is to set up your workspace. If you don't have a home office, don't worry. You can still work from home pro productively. Teams has been designed as a virtual office that you can take anywhere you go. While you may not have a printer, physical files, or a desk phone at home, you can pull up documents directly in Teams, securely store files where the right people can access them, and quickly jump into calls and meetings. Communicate. With many of us working from home for at least part of the time, we still rely on core hours that are built around our physical presence in the office. When working from home, your daily schedule may change. This is especially true for those of us balancing work and childcare. Clearly communicate your working hours with your teammates and collaborators so that they know when to reach you. You can also set a status message in Teams to share this information proactively. Make sure you maintain healthy boundaries. Without the usual workday signals, like a walk to grab lunch, for instance, or a commute, unplugging can be a real challenge at the moment. Remote workers sometimes find themselves working for long stretches without breaks, for exercise, socialising, or even a proper meal. This will click, quickly lead to stress and burnout. Remember, your health comes first. Make time for your meals, drink plenty of water and remind yourself to mentally clock out from remote work at the end of the day. Hey, share your meals, have some fun, put up some photos, just to sort of 
make light of it if you can. Embrace online meetings. In the absence of a physical conference room, bringing everyone together can feel like the biggest remote work challenge of all. As you move meetings to Teams, make sure all meetings have a virtual join option to create an online conference room. Also, we suggest that all participants turn on video if they are comfortable doing so. The face-to-face -face interaction goes a long way to help make everyone feel connected. Make sure you're mindful and inclusive. Moving to online meetings may remove some of the visual cues that we rely on to see if a colleague has something to say in a meeting. And overcrowded conference calls can make it difficult for people to share their opinions. Meeting organisers should pause frequently to invite questions and remind attendees that they can also use the meeting chat window to share their thoughts. Record your meetings. To compensate for the lack of face time, some remote workers schedule extra meetings in order to stay connected with their customers, partners and co-workers. Double bookings can be hard to avoid. If your organisation allows it, record meetings in teams so that co-workers can catch up later. If you can't attend yourself, remind the organiser to record in your absence. Try to make up for missing hallway talk. A lot of remote workers find the thing that they miss the most about the office is casual conversations. Chats at the water cooler, they not only keep us connected, but they often surface important information or insights we wouldn't have guessed. Be deliberate about reaching out and connecting with your coworkers. Think of chat messages as your virtual water cooler and set yourself a reminder to check in with people regularly. Emojis, GIFs and stickers are a fun way to keep the chatter fun and light. And bring the team together. Working remotely can feel isolating. As a leader, it's important to create opportunities for the whole team to get together virtually. Maintain your regular team meeting cadence or team lunches. Just make them online. Use the general channel in teams for discussions that might be of interest to everyone. Have fun. With all the changes that come with moving to remote work, it's important to foster and maintain team morale. There are many things you can do within teams to keep people feeling positive and engaged. Share news and stories in your team chat or do something like hold a photo contest. We understand that every individual and team works differently, but I hope the tips that you have got out of today helps you stay productive and connected as you adjust to a new way of working. And remember, you can start using Teams today by signing up for a free account with Microsoft or contact your IT administrator to have it enabled on your network. Thanks everyone for your time. And I'll now hand it back to James for further Q&A. Thank you, Eliza. That was fantastic. Um, I'm still seeing a few questions coming through and I must admit there's lots of, I think, interest in the calendar functionality. I think one thing to mention is that effectively with the Teams calendar, it's a mirror image of what you have with your Outlook calendar. Um, now it has some extra features to, that, you know, are obviously integrated with Teams specifically, but things around um, repeating meetings, um, it has a scheduling assistant just as you do in Outlook. So really you can actually use your calendar in Teams instead of Outlook if you want to. You, you've really got the same sort of features in both tools. You can look at it by week, by working week. Um, so there might be maybe a few bits and pieces here that aren't quite you know, on parity with Outlook, but it is essentially the same system. So as I said, behind the scenes, uh, from a security and, and information management point of view, the content you create within Teams is actually either going into Exchange and being archived there in terms of chat transcripts or files are going into SharePoint. So don't create it with the whole of your Office 365 environment and that includes Outlook. Um, so I think that's just um, answered a couple of um, those calendar type questions that have come up. The, the other thing that I thought was quite interesting and it's a really important tip is someone was just asked saying that they, they use Teams in two different places. Uh, two different organizations and, and how do you switch between the two? I must say this is currently a, a bit of a limitation in the desktop or web-based version of Teams, but it doesn't deal with the fact that you you might be a member of, of, of different teams with different organizations. 
ironically, the mobile apps actually do handle this a lot better and you can actually swi switch between different teams. So I think I'm actually a member of, of teams with six different organizations and the app makes it really easy. But the way you can work around that on your desktop, on your laptop, is, is actually if you use the Chrome browser and you create separate profiles. I'll see if I can dig out a, a, a link to explain how you do that. But basically when you create a separate profile in Chrome, all your login details, the session, the cookie information is, is kept in a little island. So Teams doesn't get confused. And that's the way that you can have multiple logins to different teams um, if, if you're, you're working with different organizations. So that, that's just a little bit of a tip. I'll see if I can pull that out in the next few minutes and share that with you. Um, the, uh, I think, is there any more last questions? Because really, I think that the, the last few uh, questions I've had come through really just to uh, re repeat again that we are recording this session and Invest Wollongong will be making this recording available online. So you can certainly go back and rewatch it. Uh, we also had a question from Dave just saying, uh, asking whether we had any more or tips or notes that we could share. I will say that at the moment, you're, 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 I'm, I'm sort of seeing a, just a, a tsunami of um, tips and tricks on how to work remotely. There's certainly lots of other content out there to show you how to use Teams and Teams, uh, the support material from Microsoft also goes into all this. But I'm sure that between us, Lee, Liza and I can pull out some of our top tips and share those with you as well. Um, those people that had some very specific questions around um, technical issues, certainly happy to try and follow up um, after to see if we can find some quick um, resolution to those. But I'd really just like to see if there's any last, any last final questions from anyone. So I, don't, I think we are all done at this stage. Um, so really, I just want to take the opportunity to thank Invest Wollongong again for, for hosting this webinar with us. I do um, would like to say as well that, you know, if you're looking for some additional support, you're certainly welcome to um, contact Liza. I'm just going to actually paste into the chat a couple of links to help you with that. Um, there's also some great business networks that you can access across Wollongong and different, different people, um, skills, services and products to help you out. Uh, it's a great starting point for that. So I'll just put those into the, the, the chat. So you'll see there's a link to Invest Wollongong's um, website and some information about joining or finding local business networks. I do want to mention Siligong Valley, which is a, a local technology network that I'm part of, and that has some passionate tech professionals, digital marketers and entrepreneurs who are really trying to promote the growth of the tech industry in Wollongong. Now, if I can't help you or Liza can't help you, um, there's certainly an opportunity to reach out to the Siligon Valley community and they can normally point you in the right direction. But I'd also encourage you just to have a chat maybe with your local IT provider as they might better help you as well. So those links are in the chat there. Um, and yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone again. And, and, and yeah, if you look out for an email from Invest Wollongong, you will find a link to the recording of this chat once we have a chance to upload it. Thanks everyone and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, James, and thanks, everyone. Bye.